Hey you guys, before I start this video, I just want to let you guys know that this video is dedicated to one of my lucky Patreons, uh, Adam Thomas. Adam, thank you so much for your continued support. It really means a lot to me. Uh, so this de this video is dedicated to you, and I hope you enjoy it, and all the videos are to come in the future. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from Kingdom Martini Cross Nation. And today we're going to be going over part one of a series of a few videos that I have in store for you guys uh, in order to help you get better or and know what to actually use uh, in terms of PvP. Now, because I know a lot of people are kind of confused, even a lot of other YouTubers uh, I've seen that I've been watching so far. I've pretty much just been kind of like saying the exact same thing that I initially stated. And th there's a lot of things that are just kind of like not being taught well enough as well as the fact that uh i'm getting a lot of the same questions so <laughs> so i'm essentially going to be spending these next few videos to uh dedicate towards certain aspects of pvp that i wasn't really able to dive into too much in my uh what's the meta for pvp video that i had last time but aside from that today's video is going to be based on skills what skills are good for you to use on certain metals and certain traits and all that good stuff so before i actually get into uh, the different like topics and, and certain things you guys should be aware of, okay? I want to bring up a slight disclaimer real quick. Uh, everything I tell you in this video is more meant to be a good rule of like rule of thumb type of advice and is not supposed to be any sort of like end all be all type of advice, okay? Because um, very easily there can very possibly be times where uh, you can run into a situation where you might actually want one thing over the other, okay? So uh, just keep in mind this is a rule of thumb. It's nothing set in stone so before i get into actual metals uh in terms of like skills for pvp and such okay uh let's talk about traits first in terms of pvp there's pretty much three types of traits that are actually effective in pvp and in different ways the first one being extra attack extra attack is by far the best trait in the entire Pretty much in the entire game okay it's good in pvp it's good in regular modes too uh the only thing that extra attack is probably not really uh beneficial in is for luck setups but that's basically it everything else in the game you would pretty much want extra attack especially for pvp as well because it does provide extra damage um which only helps boost your score and for another reason too in, in terms of pvp that i'll state in a second uh the other type of traits that are effective for pvp are the status ailment resistant trait. Now that the fact that PvP is finally <laughs> the battleground where status ailment uh, skills are finally actually uh, super useful and even broken to be honest, status ailment traits are actually going to be useful in this game for once. So for all of you who had those like really bad high score challenge medals uh, just because of the fact that you only rolled like trait resistant traits on them and such, those were actually really beneficial and almost ideal for PvP now. Because now they actually prevent you, help prevent against being inflicted by the status elements that uh, people will inflict on you with like triple threat. Um, those are probably going to be the second best type of traits to have for PvP. The third type of traits that you uh that are effective in pvp are going to be the minus 60 traits and like the uh basically i call them like the attack trait um these type of traits are like third best they help you do a little bit extra damage but uh the minus 60 traits don't really do that much damage to be honest because in fact our levels are so low and our defense are so low compared to a lot of the high level uh bosses we'll actually fight against in game they honestly don't actually do as much as you would think they would do um, just because they're minus 60. Minus 60 traits are only actually effective against high level enemies who have high amounts of defense. We as players don't really have very high defense at all whatsoever so they don't really do that much. Plus 1000 strength is great um, but it honestly doesn't add too much damage kind of like the minus 60 traits as well. That's kind of like the order of like best to uh, worst uh, in terms of traits are actually useful in pvp now for each of the type of traits that i just listed okay there are certain types of skills that you should typically have associated with each of them each of these skills are typically the most beneficial when used with these certain types of traits in general concept wise um the first one being extra attack for extra attack any metal with extra attack is going to be a very great candidate 
that you can use any sort of status ailment effects uh, skills on them. Okay, and that is solely because of the fact that if you have a status ailment skill on a metal with extra attack, no matter what the metal is, solely because of the fact it gives you extra chances to try and get that status ailment effect to go off and, hit and, afflict, and afflict the opponent. Because of the fact that status ailment skills don't have a 100% proc rate even with the skill perks, you want to try and give yourself as many chances as possible to help guarantee that the skill can go off. And having extra attack helps guarantee that. In terms of the ailment resistant traits, okay, these are, are kind of more of like a defensive type trait. So typically metals that have high amounts of ailment resistant traits could be candidates for defensive skills. Now remember, like I said in the beginning of the video, that uh, this these are more like a general, like a nice rule of thumb type thing and you don't have to follow these, okay? Because I completely realize that sometimes you'll have attack metals who have just who have all the resistant traits in the world, okay? And you might want just the uh, the attack boost max skill on that compared to uh, a defensive skill, okay? So remember, use your head a little bit when you make the decision. These are just kind of like little, nice little uh, kind of guidelines you can use to use your skills on. Ailment resistant traits are can be nice candidates to use defensive skills on because they it's basically defense for PvP. As well as uh, any of the like attack traits that I mentioned before, such as the minus 60 ground and the plus 1000 strength, for example, uh, those type of traits you would probably want to put a attack skill on. Okay, that, that kind of makes sense. Now again, please use this as just a guideline and make your own educated decision when, when using this because it's very easy. You could have uh, all the minus 60 and plus 1000 strength traits on a like turtle metal or a buffer metal for all you care in the world. Um, and you might not actually want that attack boost max skill on the metal for example okay just in terms of traits alone these are like the types of skills you can try and have associated with them in terms of pvp just keep that in mind now that we covered traits let's go into the actual metals all right this is where things get a little bit more uh dicey but at the same time it's actually a lot simpler than you might think as well okay so in terms of metals kind of like traits how they're like there's like three there's basically three different categories of traits uh that are good for pvp same thing applies to metals, right? There's basically three types of metals that you have associated in PvP that get used for different purposes and who also you would want different types of skills to be used on, all right? The first type of trait are going to be your main buffer and debuffer metals. These are essentially any of the metals that you'll put in the first two slots of a normal Keyblade setup. So for example, uh, stained glass metals, Kairishioni EX, even, even VIP metals such as like the Toon Santa Roxas or whatever, even old VIP metals like the uh, Illustrated Pride Land Sora, 0.2 Kyrie. These are the type of metals that I would consider as like main buffer, debuffer metals. Uh, because they always go in the first two slots of your Keyblade to help set up the rest of the setup. They're not meant for damage at all whatsoever. They're literally there for their effects to buff up your uh, strength and just like just annihilate with the rest of your setup. That's all they're there for. Uh, if they do extra stuff, that's awesome. It's just icing on the cake, but they're not meant there for the extra stuff. They're literally just there for buffs and debuffs. These type of metals, with the exception of Kyrie and Shion EX, which I'll explain in a second, these are great candidates in PvP uh, to use status ailment skills on them, okay? Uh, the main purpose behind this is for a few reasons. Because of the fact that we have infinite HP in PvP, we just never die, second chance is redundant and useless. Uh, in PvP. Like, there's no point in having second chance. And because of the fact that these metals aren't meant for damage at all whatsoever, attack boost skills aren't recommended on them either. And they're not turtle metals either, so you don't, like, they're, n they're not there to help you survive uh, either in terms of survivability. So you don't want any defensive skills on them either. Um, so realistically, the, uh, the prime candidate of skills that you would want on your main buffer and debuffer metals are going to be the status ailment skills. And like I mentioned before, the only exception to this that I would probably say would be the Chiron Stream X, primarily because of the fact that they are just so universally uh, useful throughout the entire game that you're probably going to want to use Chiron Stream X uh, for other game modes as well, not just PvP. So in that case, you would want to keep second chance skills on your Kyrie Shioni X and use them for universal setups and such. And any other random main buff or debuff metal that you might have just laying around, uh, that those are the ones I would recommend putting the status element traits on. The second main type of metal 
is going to be damage metals. This one should be a little bit more easier, a lot more straightforward. Any type of metal that just provides high amounts of multipliers and such uh, are going to be damage metals. Uh, so for example, things like Hercules B, even things like 358 Days Riku when using the third slot, uh, or like Kingdom Hearts 2 Leon in the pet slot and such, these, these are pretty much used like damage metals. Illustrated Aqua B is a damage metal, uh, especially since we have infinite HP too. Her text changed by the way, I don't know if you guys noticed. Uh, but these are examples of damage metals, okay? They have high multipliers, that, uh, if they provide extra effects that's awesome, but they're really there for the multipliers. These are the type of metals that you would want to put attack boost uh, skills on them, okay? Preferably max, but at least attack skills on them in general. Now, the third type of metal in the game that can be that are good and useful in PvP are going to be your turtle metals. Okay, essentially any type of metal that provides any sort of defensive buff or any sort of strength debuff are technically considered as turtle metals. Now, not all turtle metals are going to be the best turtle metals that you would want to use. Um, obviously, I would not want to use like a young Kyrie uh, over a HD Zexion, for for example. Uh, but Young Kyrie does count as a turtle metal, for example, because the fact she does provide defense. For these type of metals, you pretty much just want to use defensive skills on them. Defense skills in general, you would preferably want to use on turtle metals uh, for a variety of reasons, which is not only are they going to be good in PvP, uh, especially like any sort of defense max skill uh, will be like even like it's like top tier. But not only will they be good in PvP, but they are also very effective universally in other uh game modes throughout the game as well they're great for just normal turtle setups in general so like when you're trying to use turtle strategies to beat other uh special events and game modes and such they're good for that as well as the fact that they are also be useful for a pvp team so you would primarily just want to use defensive skills on turtle metals in general now that i've explained the three main types of metals uh now we gotta go into it even a little bit further there's actually pretty much like three subtypes uh of metals that are uh, beneficial within PvP as well, um, and this is where things get a little bit more complicated, so bear with me. So the first subtype of metal that can be useful within PvP are going to be any sort of uh, ailment curating uh, effects, okay? They cure you of your status ailments. Now, oddly enough, there's actually not that very metals in the game that provide uh, this type of effect. There's actually only, as far as I can tell, only six existing metals in the entire game that actually cure you of your status ailments. Uh, for those of you who are not aware, status ailments and status effects are two completely separate things. Status effects are buffs and debuffs, whereas status ailments are things like poison, sleep, and paralysis. They are completely two different things, so please bear that in mind when looking at uh, metals effects and such for their special abilities. And in terms of curing status ailments, there's only six existing metals in the entire game as far as I'm aware. There is Key Art 15, The World Ends With You Art, Snow White, Pluto, Mowgli and Pals, and Abu. Now, Key Art 15 and The World Ends With You, those were VIP medals as far as I'm aware. Um, and Mowgli and Pals was a farmable medal. So chances are, if you don't have those medals already, uh, you're not going to be able to see them again, at least not anytime soon. So the only options left for you are medals such as like Snow White, Pluto, and Abu. For these six medals, I would recommend putting any sort of status ailment trait on these medals uh, for a variety of reasons, okay? The first one being that they cure you of your status ailments. Um, they're pretty much only going to be useful for PvP. Um, and in that regards, you're not going to use them for the rest of the game mode, so it's completely okay to put status ailments on these metals, since you're not really gonna, probably going to be using status ailments throughout the rest of the game modes anyways either. As well as the fact that it's also like a, like a two-for-one uh, when you get to cure yourself of status ailments on top of being able to try and inflict status ailments on your opponent as well. So it's like a very nice like two for one punch. You can not only do you cure yourself, but you also get to inflict on your opponent at the exact same time. Um, and these type of metals are very effective uh, in setups such as like turtle setups. Uh, but if you need to, you can still put these at like the beginning or end of your keyblade if you really want to as well. Now the second subtype of metal that you guys should be aware about are going to be fixed damage and SP restoration type metals. Now I kind of grouped these together in the same uh, category because mainly because the fact my advice for both of them ends up being the same. So metals such as like Illustrated Orin, Illustrated Kingdom Hearts 2 Kyrie, The World Ends With You 
art. For SP restoration and fixed damage medals, I would recommend either putting a status ailment of skill or a defensive skill on these type of medals. Either one is completely fine for these, for these type of medals. Um, primarily because of the fact that like these medals are most likely going to be old medals they don't use anyways for the rest of the other game modes. Um, and having a defensive skill on them for solely for PvP uh, it's completely fine. Now, I'll be providing a little quick cheat sheet to help you guys out with specific decisions uh, in terms of like, well, if metals have like multiple of these type of things you're telling me, I'll be, uh, I'll have a little uh, cheat sheet that you guys can look at in a second uh, to help you make those decisions. And the third subtype of metal that I want to go over are going to be dispel effects. For dispel effects, you could honestly put any type of skill on these type of metals, primarily because of the fact that uh, dispel effects seem to be kind of scattered throughout different types of metals. They seem to be on SP restoration and fixed damage metals. Uh, they seem to be on turtle metals. Uh, they'll be on damage metals and stuff. Like they're literally scattered kind of throughout all of the main categories and such. So, so in that regards, um, it, you kind of have to make a decision based on the metal itself. And and those are pretty much the three subtypes: uh, SP restoration and fixed damage. Together is one subtype. There's ailment curation metals. And there's dispel effects. In case you don't know what dispel effects means, when I say dispel effects, what I mean by that is that there will be metals in the game that will say something along the lines of it will remove the target's status effects. Any metal that has like that type of phrasing are considered dispel effects uh, because of the fact that you remove buffs and debuffs. Now, by this point in the video, you guys, some of you guys might be wondering, like, okay, well, uh, I have metals who fit multiple of these categories. How exactly am I going to make a decision? Okay. Um, so like for example, if you have like the world ends with you art, um, that can count as like a buffer debuffer metal, uh, as well as fixed damage and SP, re SP restoration. Uh, on top of it also cures ailment creations and stuff like that. So it's like it, it fits multiple categories. So what would be the best scale for like metals that fit multiple? That's where my little cheat sheet comes in handy. All right. So right here on the screen, I'll be providing a, a link to the image down below as well for you guys to take a look at. Um, before this guideline, I essentially created a little cheat sheet for you guys in order to uh, help you make some uh, at least brief glance uh, rule of thumb type of decisions when deciding as to what type of skills to put on your medals in terms of PvP. So I pretty much put everything that I just told you guys throughout the, the video so far into this cheat sheet and made it so easy to look at. So for example, um, for the main types, I have the main buffers, which I advise putting status ailments. And then I have turtle, which I advise defensive skills. And then I have damage, well, which is obviously attack skills. Okay. And then I have the subtypes next to it, which are these ailment curations, which I advise the status ailments, SP restoration and fixed damage, which I advise defense or status ailment. And then I have the spell effects, which could be any of the three. So I pretty much laid out everything that I've described right here on this little cheat sheet. Now, how exactly can you go about using this cheat sheet in case uh, you come across a metal that happens to do multiple of these type of things, which makes sense because like uh, this is a main type and it goes into a subtype. Like every single metal that you'll use in the game is going to be one of these and then more or less going to be one of these as well. Okay, very possibly. So trying to figure out and decide like how to go about making decisions based off like the subtypes uh, between the subtypes and main types is pretty much what this uh, little helpful cheat sheet is going to help you with. Okay, so for example, let's say we want to find out exactly what is the best skill that we should we put on key art 15, for example. For those of you that don't know, this is what key art 15 does. Uh, for one turn, it provides upright strength by one tier, strength and PSM strength by three tiers, cures own status ailments, crit recovers HP, and restores three gauges. So by going off of that description, we can essentially put this metal in multiple categories. It pretty much fits in the main buffer section at, for the main type of metal that it is. Uh, it doesn't provide any defensive buffs, nor does it reduce the opponent's strength, so it's not a turtle metal, uh, as well as it's not meant for damage it has low multipliers uh, so it's not a damage metal so it's literally just a main buffer metal and because of the fact that it does restore gauges uh, it can it does count as an SP restoration metal and it also cures status ailments so it will count in here okay so it fits in three different categories one main category as well as two subtypes okay now how would I make a decision 
on what type of skill to put on the metal based off of this, okay? Hopefully it should be fairly simple just by looking at the chart, but you should go according to what is the most common type of skill that gets uh, recommended amongst all the ones that got circled, okay? So for main buffers, it's just status ailment, all right? So, and because of the fact we, it also cures status ailments, uh, status ailment is looking like the skill to you so far. And it also counts an SP re restoration type metal, um, which also has a possible recommended status ailment. Um, so we have out of all three of them, all three recommend status ailment amongst all of them. So in that regards, uh, key art 15 would be a metal I would recommend putting status ailments skills on. Them, okay. Now let's take another metal, for example. Let's take key art number 12 into account for example. For those of you that don't know, uh, key art number 12 says for two turns it raises your general strength by two tiers, general defense and PSM strength and defense by one tier, rids target status effects and inflicts more damage the smaller the slot number. So based off this description, key art number 12 actually fits in multiple categories again. So for the most part I would pretty much consider key art number 12 a turtle metal because of the fact it's we're mainly using it for the defensive buffs that he provides. Now, in terms of the subtypes that he has, okay, he doesn't cure, uh, he doesn't cure elements, so he's not that. He doesn't provide any SP restoration, and he doesn't do fixed damage, so he's not at that, okay? So he's pretty much only a dispel effect, okay? This dispel effect is the only thing that he provides for the subtype. And notice the common skill that is shared between the two, okay? This is defense boost, uh, and this shares defense boost. So, for a metal like Kira number 12, which is a turtle metal and has a dispel effect, I would recommend putting a defense boost skill on that metal. So one more example before I end this video, let's talk about Man in Black. So Man in Black, he cures your own status effects and removes the status effects of all targets, so both you and your opponent. He greatly recovers HP and inflicts a fixed amount of damage regardless of defense, okay? All right, so in this regards, um, we're looking at the main types. He's not a turtle metal, okay? He's not a buffer metal. Okay, he does do damage, but he does fixed damage. Uh, so having an attack skill on a metal that only does fixed damage makes no sense whatsoever. So we can cross him off there. So he literally doesn't fit in any of the normal main types. So we're pretty much looking at just the subtypes. He's uh, he doesn't cure ailment curation. He does fixed damage. Okay, so he does fit in here. In which case, it's recommended defense or status ailment. Right, and he does dispel effects. Okay, which is also the same thing. So, and just like with the thing with the damage over here, uh, an attack skill makes no sense on him because he only does fixed damage. In which case, and for a metal like Man in Black, um, you can literally—it's completely up to you on whether or not you want to use defense skills or status ailment skills, since both of the only categories that he applies to recommend both. Okay, so it's completely up to you and what your uh, and how you decide to want to use it. Now, just as a quick disclaimer, in the event that you find a metal that doesn't have any matching skill recommendations in my little quick guide, uh, quick sheet type thing, that's going to be one of those situations where you're going to have to make a decision as to uh, what type of skill do you think you're going to end up actually wanting, needing the most out of that metal in question. That's just a quick disclaimer because it can it can always happen sometime in the future. Well, other than that, guys, that was it for today. Uh, remember, this entire video was more meant as a general guideline, rule of thumb type video and advice. This is just to help you uh, make your decisions as to what is going to be good uh, skills to use on certain metals in regards to PvP. But other than that, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe and hit that bell button. It is the best way to know when I make more videos such as this one. But other than that, my name is Brian from Kingdom Martini Cross Nation, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.